Pose Gloves here, and in this episode of Harmer from the Ground Up, we're going to be talking about the envelope option. We're going to start moving over to controlling envelopes and things. Envelopes, the amount of power these give you. A lot of synthesizers have them. A lot of them don't. A great deal of them don't, especially less you know expensive synths, and that's because they are they give you so much control and power, but they take a lot of programming and just a lot of work to make happen. But these are essentially available on almost anything, on any of your options here of your parameters to control. You will have, uh, so you select whatever you want to control, and you come over here and you'll have envelope, LFO, and you have all these other options. We're going to focus on the envelope, and this will probably be a two-part video because there's seriously that much. It's a little complicated with the envelopes they have here because they have so many. So first off, we'll notice that we have our uh, an ADSR envelope, which just stands for attack, decay, sustain, release, because we're controlling our volume. So our volume, so our x-axis on an envelope is always time. So we have our time going across our x-axis. Our y-axis is whatever parameter we're turning on and off. And at the bottom is all the way off, and at the top is all the way on. So we can see over time, our stuff turns on, it decays a bit, and then we hit this sustain. This says hold out, hang out here for a little bit, and or as long as you're holding down the note, and then move on. So it's going to stop at this value. So, But in order to do this, see right now, it's on what's called gate mode. So we just we hit a key, and the magic happens. So if we turn on our envelope, you'll see it turns on blue. And now as we hit a key, it jumps from decay to our release time over here when we've let go of the note. So we can have any number of shenanigans going on in here. Now some quick notes, you can right click to add a note. I mean, add a point. Uh, you can right click to delete a point. You uh, now, If you have your magnet symbol on down here, you can add them on the grid specifically. If you hold down, if you right click while you're not on a point, uh, you'll actually add a point. You have to turn this off. I am so sorry. While you're on your pencil tool, and if you right click, on the pencil tool while you're not on a point. I guess it doesn't matter. So the pencil tool lets you drag points. If you right click, you can delete them very quickly. Right now it's being attached to the grid because we have a grid option on. You can do freehand instead and it will add a bunch of points for you. Uh, you also have a freeze menu. So now I can no longer edit points, but I can click and drag to zoom in all sorts of interesting ways. So that's a nifty feature. Turn that off, turn that off. And then finally, if we add a point, we can click this little arrow button here all points after this point will be moved as a function of this point moving so we can move these or you know do whatever we want to do turn it off and this point will now move in between its two nearest points but it cannot go any further than that and right click or also if you hold down control while you move you get uh well if you hold down control while you're not on snap mode i suppose you will get uh more refined movement so you can right click a point to get that pop-up menu i've been uh, flicking through over and over and over to delete points. If you only have like one point, you don't want to go click the pencil tool. All right, so we can move points to adjust um, our time and how it reacts. But we have these four knobs down here. Uh, now these four knobs make what's called relative changes. So right now, let's say we want our attack time to be faster, so we just move the attack time up, right? But uh, you can't automate this point. Unfortunately, they don't have that. But you can automate these knobs. Well, what the heck do these knobs do if you can just move the points? They make relative changes so that you can automate things in your track, uh, individual of where your points are on your grid. Because creating the code to automate these, I don't know what it takes, but I'm sure it's way crazier than moving a knob. So as we move this, we'll see our envelope begin to shift. And you see the thing we're adjusting turns gray. And as we move it up, our attack time just got changed, but it snaps back. What the heck just happened? Well, now it's going to play as if this point was over here. And at first you might be going like, that's dumb or whatever. But as I just explained, that's really helpful during your song. If you want to move your attack time and do some interesting things, this allows you to take a, uh, something with a strong transient attack and morph it into a pad or do any number of like shenanigans. So that's a, that's a really powerful tool we have there. Hold down Alt and click it to reset it. So this is, this is your attack, this is your decay. So when you let go of the note, what happens? Uh, well, this middle ground between your, I, I think, I don't know what this D stands for, 
but this is the maximum value of your attack. Then you have your sustain. So we need to hold the note. This is the value it hangs out at after it's gone through the decay. I'm pretty sure this stands for decay. Oh, it, it, no, dir, you're moving that point. That has to be decay. Then you have release. And after you sustain this section, uh, when you let go of your note, this is the release phase of your envelope. As you can see, when I let go of my note, it hopped over to that phase. Just whammo, right over there. You can actually assign points to these different time values. Now, it gets a little tricky because there's a whole bunch more to this. Uh, you'll notice that we have a tempo. Tempo allows you to lock your... So, what, we, what just happened? Our grid just got changed to the tempo of our song. So, our, our uh, playback will now happen at the tempo. And each one of these grids now is in, somehow related to our tempo. And you can see it's going much faster now. So that may or may not be important to you. Uh, what does global do? I don't know, but I suspect it has to do with the way it interacts with other envelopes within Harmer. Based on what it says up here in the little hint window, it says shared re-triggered envelope. So uh, take that for what it's worth. So anyways, that's that. Now we're going to go into, uh, we're going to call good after I talk about this pop-up menu right here. So... You can add points, and if you right-click, you can go through a bunch of different curves. So uh, we have delete if you want to delete a point. You'll see this is point three out of five points. So this is the third point in our series. We have it click hold. We'll get this curve. It just goes up to the maximum and holds there. We can go to smooth, and you'll see we have this bevel. Whenever this bevel is there, that means we can adjust it somehow. So as you see, we can smooth it out with this sort of S-curve. We have a single curve, which is typical to what we see. And this is something that uh, a lot of DAWs do not support. Because um, I've used Ableton and Pro Tools and a bunch of others for school and other things. And one of the things I've really noticed is this. Actually, you know what? I can't say this about Ableton. I've not messed with it enough. But I know in Pro Tools, their automation lanes are not friendly in this regard. Uh, but you can do that. Like this, this, oh man, that's crazy. They'll say you can draw in curves, but that, oh man, there are times I just wish I could do this so hardcore. Okay, so we have single curve, all these different types of curves, half sine, this uh, half of a sine wave, smooth stairs, we have pulse, so I'm going to show you pulse, but wave is similar. So we see that we just got this blue brick, well what is this? Well if you move in the middle, you see there's supposed to be a bevel there, and as we drag up or down while holding on it, we can change our pulse. So this goes to the max, min, max, min, max, min. Really great uh, tool. And then we have wave. Now we get to this arpeggiator break and this ADSR thing. And we see that we have check marks here. These check marks mean that in our envelope, we have a point that is designated as the decay point and the loop start point and the sustain or loop end point. So uh, let's go ahead and change this. So let's change this back to a, a single curve so it's not so scary. We can make this point. The decay point and you see it shifts it we just took that away from something else we can actually delete this point and now there's no decay point which uh, may or may not be something you want um you know it's whatever we still have a, su a sustain point we can also right click and make this uh so we're talking about the idiot so attack decay sustain release is what that stands for so that's our decay point and we see that the check marks turned white indicating that we have selected the decay point we can also do, uh, we can make it the loop start point. And you see, we just, now it's doing double duty. But it now is looping. And the loop always goes from your loop point that you've selected to the sustain point. So it will loop this section over and over and over for us. So we can make an arpeggiator now if we so desire. An arpeggiator just repeats um, a pattern over and over and over. On In the piano, an arpeggiation when something like... Uh, that was an arpeggiation. You can do stuff like that. So that's kind of where the name comes from. I'm not like a linguistics expert, but that's what I associate it with. Uh, so you can create some sort of pattern here, and you can hold down a key, and it will repeat. It will loop through this pattern. And if you combine that with your tempo ability, this could be a really powerful tool. This is just on volume, but remember, you can do this for resonance, frequency, all just all loads of stuff just automatically happening for you. So that's a really, just a really powerful thing. Uh, let's delete these points. All right, so we've talked about how to do this. As soon as you make something a loop point, so let's say that we accidentally deleted this and we deleted this. And now when we hit our 
uh, key. It's in what's called one shot mode. So we will always play through your whole envelope. You have no say about it. But we're like, no, we don't we don't want that. Like, because that could be really annoying. So we can make this our decay point. I'm just saying this because this has been the source of so much trouble for me when I was learning this stuff. It really dissuaded me from experimenting further. Uh, and so now we can make another point. We could also make this loop start point or whatever. So it's a loop start point. You see it just changed that. And you see that our last point is now moving in tandem with our first point. What? Why the heck is it doing that? Well, it's doing that because uh, it needs a zero value. So if these two values are the same, it will have a, sl it will have a smooth curve when it comes in there will be no click or pop when it moves over this could be great but it also could be extraordinarily annoying uh as in this case fm8 does this um it just does so if you don't know what fm8 is don't worry about it so this is our loop start we can tell because it's got this l right there we can make this our sustained loop end and as you can see now i can move this point and be free of it but these two points move in tandem now and we have our loop uh, so that's pretty that's pretty nifty. Now this is designated as our decay. Uh, so we may want to do something like this and make our loop uh, decay start. Whoops, make our loop start here and our decay value right here. So we can have an actual decay so that things aren't sitting at its maximum all the time. So uh, if you followed all this, then you now know how to make an ARP. Uh, we could do something. We could go to our pulse our pulse wave or our smooth wave or you know whatever you want to do and you can create a cool thing there's a better tool for this um, that I'll show you in the next tutorial so that is what these things are all about now we have a few more things in this uh, menu here this arpeggiator break thing what is this well this has to do with when you are arpeggiating something we'll talk about that later but it's that thing I talked about earlier or arpeggiator back in the piano days I don't know if I said it yet in this one but you go like this. So you come up and down. You Do you have a repeating pattern? It repeats over and over and over. I'm pretty sure I did say it in this one, actually. And we can change previous, same, or next. So we could set points that are just instructional values. So we could say, at this point, instead of playing that note, the next note, play the previous one, and then continue on your merry way. So we can do things like that if we so desire. Or we could do play the same note two times in a row, which is this dash right here or you can do play the next note instead i'm not sure if this skips a note or not um now i'm not the hugest user of that particular method but that is available to you so that's all that for this tutorial um in the next one we're going to be looking at, at some of these things in here let me make sure i got it all we're going to talk about what what these things are up here a little bit later but that's envelopes and i hope you can see that this is a very powerful tool extraordinarily useful and fluid if you have any questions, drop them in the comments. Um, go to work, attach all sorts of parameters. So we've been going through this in the tutorials, but now you can select like, oh, I could do this to my EQ. And well, I guess EQ doesn't give you an option. I could do this to my uh, global envelope decay scale. And I could come in here and go to, oh, this doesn't give you an envelope either. All right, this is another way to get to an envelope. You can right click something, edit articulator. Generally, that will include an envelope that you can mess with. So that's uh, something. So you can have multiple envelopes working on a source at any one time. So if you have any questions, again, drop them in the comments. Subscribe and have a blessed day.